first thing you need to look at is your actual sky, like where do you live? We call these Bortle Scales. Brno, it's like more like this Bortle Scale 6. And if you go to a village nearby, like 50 kilometers for Brno, you can observe like four. To see the mo most of the deep sky objects, you need to have at least this area, like be in a village or maybe to take your telescope with a car like 30, 40 kilometers outside of Brno. But no worries if you are in the center of Brno or something like that, you can at least observe uh, the clusters. Um, these you don't need dark skies. And of course, the moon, the sun and the planets, they don't care. It doesn't matter how dark your sky is. Even if you go to New York, you will still be able to observe Jupiter, uh, Saturn, Mars, uh, the moon, or no problem whatsoever. Uh, but basically, we online we have maps uh, where you can find your place of residence and see what kind of Bortle scale we have. But basically, Czech Republic is not that bad unless you're living in Brno, Olomouc or Prague, which uh, is not good. Then most of it is quite usable for observation of the deep space uh, objects. If you look at the planets, uh, uh, the air quality, I would say, depends a lot. It's called seeing. Again, there are online places where you can check. And the most important here is these three parameters. If they are green and yellow, it means it's a good night for seeing the planets. If not, they will just be very blurry. They will be very, uh, it will be something like looking at a hot asphalt from the distance. It will be very wavy. And that's something that uh, we like to check because, again, it takes 10-15 minutes to get the telescope out, put something out, everything, and <laughs> you don't want to do that if the air is very bad. So it's always a good idea to check the air quality. Uh, the good news is this changes a lot. Even during one night, it can change a lot. So it doesn't matter where you live. It's a matter of choosing the right day. Now, choosing the right telescope, <clears throat> It is all about aperture. Uh, the aperture, think about as the hole in front of the telescope. No matter what kind of brand you get, no matter how quality the optics are, you will never uh, experience better pictures uh, with a small aperture. And uh, what you see sometimes in the department store telescopes where they're basically trying to sell you a scam, they try to tell you about how much magnification it can make. It doesn't matter, yeah? Magnification, you can put even 2000 uh, magnification in a telescope. You will not see anything, but you can put it there. So uh, it's almost like zooming a picture on your phone. <laughs> uh, it doesn't matter how much you zoom it. Uh, it just matters what's the actual resolution of the source image. And in order to produce source images in astronomy, the only thing which matters is aperture. And here, if I show an example of how the moon looks like, these are actual photos which I took with my equipment. So on the same night, this is a photo of the moon with binoculars, a 40 millimeters aperture. And this is a photo of the moon with 100 millimeter uh, refracting uh, small um, uh, sco spotting scope. As you can see, there is a whole lot more detail here. And if I increase magnification, it doesn't help me. So even if I, yeah, it's still blurry. And even in this case. So magnification, when it comes down to astronomy, it doesn't mean much. It's all about aperture. Magnification, usually you just uh, increase it as much as you want uh, until the image becomes blurry. And, until... and to be honest, like uh, uh, things like Andromeda, you can actually look at it, make magnification only with 30 magnification. You don't need more because it's very, very, very big. And here, if I go up and compare the 200 minutes, that's from my telescope. Again, you can see another jump of resolution so again, the bigger aperture gives you more resolution to play around with. And to be honest, in the eyepiece, it actually looks even better because this is just with an iPhone 8, which is not very ideal. So what you will see with your own eyes will be much, much, much more impressive. And here, if I compare all three, again, you can see a visible jump of quality from 40 to 100 and 200. So this is to give you some idea of what you can expect with different sizes of telescope. And here you can actually see how some of the famous objects will look like. Binoculars, uh, it's just small dot. This is the Hercules Global Cluster. That's the like 30,000 stars in one place. And uh, that's looking with a huge telescope, like 384 millimeters. That's that's a big, big uh, deal. It, it weighs like 70 kilos. 
And here what it would look like with my telescope. Here again we see examples of the planets. So if you buy one of the kids telescope which they sell, you will not be able, able to see Jupiter. It will be just one small dot, same with Saturn. If you took a little bit bigger telescope, like 70 millimeters again, just very, very small P. So to be honest, to have some kind of enjoyment, you want to at least get into this range, like the medium telescopes. Messier, the famous French guy, had a 150 millimeter, so he was able to see this. Uh, this is what I have, the 200 millimeter, and that's what I usually recommend to people because it's relatively inexpensive. It uh, it's, uh, doesn't wait too much and uh, you can easily move it, uh, relatively speaking, and it's very versatile. So here are some options. You can start with simple binoculars. These are some binoculars from my balcony. That's an actual photo of the moon I took that night. Again, you can start simple. You can do a lot by improvising. That's the eclipse from last autumn. My telescope was uh, well, far from Brno. It's like 100 kilometers, no, 70 kilometers from here. But I didn't want to miss the eclipse. <laughs> so I took uh, some uh, polarizing sunglasses, old ones, taped them on, uh, on top of the uh, binoculars and took some photos. And it burned a hole through the, uh, through the filter. So. Uh, that's a good example of how not to do it. That's very dangerous, but I just didn't want to miss it. So I just used my phone. And again, here's some photo of the moon that I took also over, over Burna. How much this costs? Uh, costs you about 100, 111 euros. Uh, the advantage of it is very compact, very small, and you can also use it for terrestrial observing. I wouldn't recommend it necessarily for astronomy, but it's a nice place to get started. Much better, of course, than, than your eyes. Then you can jump the size. They are dedicated astronomy binoculars, 80 euros. I wouldn't necessarily recommend them because they are very heavy. You need a tripod and so they are very bulky and they will not allow you to see that much because they have only 15 magnification. And for this aperture, actually, the ideal magnification would be around 30, 40. But it's an option if you're on a very tight budget. Then we have these for kids. I mean, could be, could be a nice thing to have, but again, if you're going to invest $60 for a 50 millimeter aperture, maybe just go with some, um, with some binocular assist instead. To be honest, I think that's, that's a great way, way, great way to kill the <laughs> interest in your child's uh, uh, hobby, uh, interest in the, in the hobby because they will not be able to see anything. They will just see small dots. It will be very frustrating to use, very difficult to use. And yeah, you will save some money, but uh, I don't actually recommend it. But these products exist and yeah, you, you can research them. Another option is the very famous little telescope. Again, not very recommended, just 70 millimeters of aperture. This tripod will be very shaky, very difficult to use. And even if you see famous uh, like uh, experienced astronomers using this uh, telescope, uh, first thing they do is they replace the tripod with something more expensive and then it kind of loses the whole uh, point. So again, I wouldn't uh, actually recommend buying this. What I actually did as a secondary telescope, because my main telescope is uh, far away from here, I put this spotting scope. Usually people buy these to watch at ducks, birds and things like that, but it's actually quite useful for astronomy as well. The biggest advantage, of course, it's a so-called grab and go. You don't have to deal with eyepieces, equipment, nothing. You just take it with a small bag and you're ready to go. Mount it on a small mount and yeah, you can observe within uh, minutes of a time and take some respectable uh, pictures of the moon and uh, stuff like that. Then we have some options of 70 millimeters. Again, you can uh, see if it's something that you like, $60. Combine this with a nice tripod for $100. We can have a nice observing uh, uh, spotting scope for your kit. This is the option that I took. Uh, cost me about $200 because I wanted to have something also here in Brno. As uh, we go to our uh, place in the village only maybe once a month and I cannot use the telescope every single time. 
and it paid off. Right now, where the comet was passing, uh, I was able to observe it from our entrance. Then here we have some options for the kit. It's so-called reflecting telescopes. These I would highly recommend for any parent that wants to uh, give something a little bit serious for their kids. So relatively nice price, comes with a nice uh, box which you can put under the tree and, and stuff like that. And it's a real telescope, yeah? These are not toys. Uh, basically, you can put eyepieces into here and just use it to observe most of the night sky. Remember the Messier, the famous guy, he had something like this. He had 150 millimeter telescope, so you can observe his entire catalog. And also quite portable, you can take it anywhere with you. Could you have that, perhaps? So, uh, things to avoid. Uh, here we have so-called power seeker so just keep in mind that even if it's recommended on amazon it can be really really bad so i would say a good rule of a thumb is to just uh, uh, do some review online if uh, it's good or not uh, based on based on what uh, what's available if you want to get really luxury this comes with a motorized mount really really nice recommended telescope virtuoso gti and basically what I have is the 200p. We can buy a lot of equipment from AliExpress for some uh, nice amount of money. Yeah. If you want to do some imaging, again, about $50 of investment for some basic imaging. The images that you saw is with this equipment, so not big fun investment. Mine costs right now about $650, yeah. And what I wanted to show was that uh, it's actually investment, yeah? In IT world, whenever we buy something, we end up losing the entire value over a few years, but here it's different. Here you actually see eight years ago, it cost only $350, now it's 650 So once you invest into this hobby, it just stays uh, with you forever. Again, same aperture, higher price. Uh, Counterintuitively, in astronomy, if you want something smaller, it will actually cost you a lot more. <laughs> uh, the bigger stuff is actually more uh, cheap because of uh, the technology involved. And here we have some uh, examples of how the zoom works. So this is Spielberg in the distance from my uh, apartment. 39 zoom, 60, then being to 340, uh, 342. And here even to 413, so you can you can zoom quite quite a bit with it. And then I'll just quickly bruise just for information. You can hold higher, 250, 300. <laughs> then we can go to 400. As you can see, price goes up quite a bit. If you're still not happy, you can go to 450. Still not happy, you can go to 500. All these are amateur telescopes. It will set you quite a bit. You can go to 635 <laughs> if you have a trailer to go to go with it. Still not happy. Here you see the big difference. And here you can actually see how it helps you seeing the global cluster more. As you see, size grows exponentially, but the view grows only linearly. You're seeing a little bit better, but not as much as the telescope is growing. If you're still not happy, Orion have you covered with the monster Dobsonian size. <laughs> So yeah, every, every, everything is possible even in amateur astronomy. So which one do you choose? I'd say you have to think about location, where you will use it. If you're using it in Brno, maybe just focus on the planets. If you have a place uh, somewhere in some village, then maybe pick that, that one. Then what will be your budget? I'd say I wouldn't buy anything which is cheaper than $200 because it will not be good and it will just kill the passion and the interest in the hobby. But anything from 200 starting until one ta until maybe 600 and with equipment to 1000, it will bring you a lot, a lot of satisfaction. And it depends on your passion, like how much time you intend to put into it. The good news here is once you make this investment, it will stay forever. Yeah, your kids will inherit it. Such a telescope, it will not decrease in value. It will only increase. And maybe in 20 years, you will even sell it for more than you bought it because of inflation. For more resources, you can check um, these two places, Cloudy Nights. 
And if you intend to make any purchase, I highly recommend you discuss it here on the beginners forum. If you are more into watching videos, Skywatcher USA has a great channel to get you started. 